And next up to the stage, I'd like to welcome internationally renowned nutrition researcher and laureate professor in nutrition and dietetics at the University of Newcastle. Welcome, Professor Claire Collins. Good morning. And I'm morning, just going Claire. to share my screen with you. I'll hang around to make sure that all goes well and see if I can assist in any way before I leave you to Thank it. Thank you. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Over to you. you. Can, <laughs> lovely. You can now see me. That's great. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here to talk to you about nutrition, the missing piece of the puzzle. Just for the organisers, I'm getting a lot of background noise there from the uh, back chat room, if you can mute that. It's actually very distracting. If you could block out that background noise, that would be really great. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about nutrition, the missing piece of the corporate puzzle. If your yes, business... Sorry to interrupt. It yes. may be that you have another screen open. If you close that down, you won't get any of that feedback. Okay. So if I close down that back chat room? Right? Yes, so that you only doing? have this window open. Yes. Okay. Solve it Lovely. For you. So I'm going to close the, the speaker hub. Okay. Lovely. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And I'll just go back to um, the big screen again. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about those technical glitches. So if your business depended on really reliable transport, what support services would your staff need? Have a think about that. Well, the staff would know how to refuel those vehicles appropriately. You'd need to have some procedures in place to guide the timely vehicle repair as well as the ongoing maintenance. And you'd want those services provided by qualified and efficient service providers. So what's actually fueling your most valuable resource, your employees? Is it healthy food or is it something else? So what you eat affects your brain function and that affects your workplace performance. So I strongly believe that food and nutrition is the missing piece of the puzzle. Workplace nutrition support does influence the food that's provided at the canteen, that's provided when you host a function, and every meeting you have where there's food and drinks provided. So having strong policies and procedures to guide nutrition, nutrition health and nutrition issues in the workplace is paramount to your employees' health and well-being. And having access to qualified nutrition service providers is essential. And a lot of people go, really, are you sure about that? It's only food. Sure, it is only food. But we know that diet-related risks are the third most common contributor to the burden of disease in Australia. And have a look at those five top risks. In fact, nutrition contributes to all four of those. We do have national guidelines. Not too many people have heard of the Australian Dietary Guidelines, let alone heard of the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating there on your right, which is the template to guide rough selection of the core healthy food groups. If we could click our fingers magically and people suddenly all over Australia were eating just like recommendations in the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating, our burden of disease for from heart disease would drop by 62% down to this number of people. The burden from type 2 diabetes would drop by 42%. And you can see there on the screen, stroke by 30% and bowel cancer, the most common preventable diet-related condition by 22%. When we ask people, how do you reckon your eating habits are? Most people say, hmm, I think I usually eat really healthy. But when we look at the evidence from the National Nutrition Survey, it's that we actually don't eat really healthy. See those, these foods down here? They're called discretionary foods, energy dense, nutrient poor. They're not on the plate, the Healthy Australian Guide to Healthy Eating plate. The guidelines recommend they should contribute around 10 to 15% of our total energy intake but they contribute from one third up to 40%, depending on your age group. Part of the problem is we really don't know 
what we usually eat or drink. How often have you been in this situation where TV dinner, you get to the end of the movie or the show and go, who ate that? Like, where, did, where did it go? So here's part of the problem. In the 1950s, the average supermarket looked like this. You had to think about what groceries you needed because the grocer weighed and measured them out for you, put them in the brown paper bags, and off you went home with your basket. In the 60s and 70s, the shopping trolleys were invented and we were able to navigate the supermarket ourselves and collect up what we needed for our meals. The average supermarket today, depending on the size, has 10 to 15,000 products. So much choice and so easy to choose wrong. And many of that expansion of food products from the around 500 in 1950 up to this 10 to 15,000 is in ultra processed packaged food. It really does make choosing healthy food a challenge. So every opportunity that can support people to eat healthier is really important. Now, quick guessing competition. This is a day's food supply. How many kilojoules or calories, if, if you prefer calories, do you think that would be in this? And that's not a totally perfect day's intake. There's a glass of wine and a glass of soft drink and a couple of, couple of biscuits. How many kilojoules? Well, it's around 8,000 kilojoules divide by four to get calories, roughly 2,000 calories, roughly enough to keep an, an adult moving for the day, depending on how active they are. Another guessing competition, how many kilojoules do you think are in each of these snacks or meals? You probably already guessed it, 8,000 for each of those images. So this is why it's challenging to know where the kilojoules come from and why you can find yourself unsure why you might be gaining weight or why your diet related health is not great. You know, your blood pressure is going up or you have high cholesterol. Let's bring that a bit closer to the workplace. What's for morning tea at work? So when you think we're gonna have a fun morning tea and we're gonna break out the Danish pastries or the donuts, think again. For every iced sprinkled donut, you need to spend 88 minutes walking to burn that up or 48 minutes on your bike. 316 calories, 1,300 kilojoules. And if it's just a glazed donut, it's still nearly an hour of walking. If your employees are super busy and you're interested in their health, don't feed them food that makes their life harder. So few people, these are a few metrics on the Australian food supply. So less than one in 10 adults eat that ubiquitous five serves of vegetables a day, where a serve is half a cup cooked or one cup of salad. Five to seven serves of discretionary foods are consumed a day by adults. That's nowhere near the one to two, is it? And look how many adults are drinking sugar sweetened beverages or having a substantial portion of their discretionary foods coming from alcohol. Okay. Going to be a bowl of lollies on that next um, meeting table. Dental health is really neglected. Lollies lead to dental caries, holes in your teeth. And each one of those pieces of, pieces of candy or lollies contains about a teaspoon of sugar. And it takes 20 minutes for your mouth to recover from the acid attack that those normal bacteria that live in your mouth produce and that then erode the tooth enamel. And it's even longer if it's a sticky, a sticky lolly where it's, some's going to remain on your teeth. On average, Australians spend about $7 a week on their dental health. You're making it harder for your employees when you give them lollies. Um, put sugar-free uh, chewing gum if, if you must have something on the table. And about one in five adults avoided going to the dentist because of the costs. Don't make it harder for your employees to be healthy. What about workplace interventions? Do they work? Well, here's the key outtakes from a systematic review that was published recently. So workplace interventions can effectively reduce absenteeism, so the number of days people don't come to work. And multi-component interventions to date have focused a lot on physical activity and a lot on stress, and some have focused on weight management, but fewer have actually focused on nutrition at the individual level. 
The ones that are successful have been multi-component and addressed a number of risk factors. They've included counselling, some have been delivered virtually, and they've included individualised interventions and less than 10 sessions maximum. But very few have targeted health risks. So genuinely trying to connect people to support for improving their diet for blood pressure, cholesterol, pre-diabetes and future high quality randomised trials are needed. And we're really keen to partner with any organisations who are interested in doing research in this area and truly evaluating a workplace intervention or who are interested in providing individualised tailored nutrition for their employees. And just hop over to, um, hop over, I'll show you where to go in a minute, hop over to the, um, the um, pods there, the advertising pods. So, do you think you need a little bit more help? This is what I was trying to say, the booth. Come and talk to us at the Australian Eating Survey booth. Register uh, your interest. Talk to our um, manager, Elise Jones, who will be manning that booth all day. So this is the Australian Eating Survey. This is 15 years of research and development to deliver an online um, diet brief dietary assessment it takes about 15 minutes to fill in this food frequency questionnaire. And what we're able to deliver for individuals in real time is a personalised breakdown of where their food is coming from. The green foods here, they come from that Australian Guide to Healthy Eating, nutrient-rich foods that help keep you healthy. And the red foods shows the breakdown from the huge categories of those ultra-processed discretionary foods. But wait there's a bit more. You can fill this in on your mob mobile phone. And we also show in using a key colour code how your nutrient intakes relate to the nutrient reference values. And uh, green means you're getting there, red means you've overshot the target and that's typically reflects very high sodium intakes. Using this same tool, we also have a um, a one-to-one -one platform for delivering confidential telehealth nutrition services that personalise individual dietary risk factors. So the key messages here, and I can see I'm a bit ahead of time, so I'll jump over and have a look at the Q&A to see if there's any key questions that I can answer while I'm online. Better nutrition really is the missing piece of the puzzle in the workplace. Better nutrition means better workplace diet-related, nutrition-related health and well-being, and it helps your staff improve their nutrition-related risk factors. So I'm talking going beyond the bowl of, of fruit at morning tea, but really supporting staff who are super busy, as we all are, in improving their eating habits for the long term. So for further advice on optimising staff-related, uh, staff nutrition-related health and well-being, connect with us on the Australian Eating Survey booth. Thank you. Now I'm just going to minimise that and see if we've got any, any questions uh, coming in on the booth. I might need to get um, the host to show me how I can see those because... Hi, Claire. Um, yes, so if you click on the stage tab on the right-hand side... Yeah. We probably have time for one question, I would say. We've got one minute. Okay. Um, okay. What is the expected ROI from a nutritional intervention in comparison to mental or physical health interventions? Well, There's what's one from Ian Clayton. Yeah, so um, to answer that specifically, you'd actually need to do an economic evaluation in a head-to-head -head trial. But the evidence is saying that uh, multi-component interventions where you address more than one risk factor is really important. The key thing about uh, about nutrition is that those eating habits will last a, a lifetime and can be issues that go back to the home. So we'd be really, really keen in uh, working with anybody who's interested in looking at in a lot more detail. But as I show you at the population level, a 65% reduction in cardiovascular disease if we really were able to support people to eat optimally that suggests a massive return on investment fantastic thank you so much claire uh, for sharing these insights with us i did note someone in the audience put down their donut as you were speaking um, so yes great to have that um, shared with us today